everyone. Welcome to Worship at the Rock. We are so excited that you could be with us tonight. Tonight we have Pastor John giving us the full Gospel Torah portion, Rabbi Jessica will be doing the Word portion, then Messianic Pastor Jim will finish off the night with the teaching portion. Now before we dive into this week's teaching, I want to thank all of you for joining us here on YouTube. Even though our ministry has been around for a while, this whole YouTube thing is a little new to us. So please make sure to ring the bell and subscribe so you know when we post new videos each week. And you're welcome to watch some of our other videos that we already have out there. We know you will be blessed. Now please join us for our weekly Full Gospel Torah portion with Pastor John. Hey everyone, I'm Pastor John, and I am blessed to be bringing you this week's full gospel Torah portion right here at Worship at the Rock. Now this week, our title for this portion is Vezot Habraka, which means this is the blessing. What is the blessing? You are probably wondering, what is the blessing? This week is the final reading of the Torah out of Deuteronomy. Next week, we begin in Genesis. Now, I want to explain one little, little quick thing here. In this Torah portion, this Torah portion is a little bit different. If you haven't already read your Torah portion, get out your Bible, read it. If you don't know where to find the Torah portions, go to graceandtruthmagazine.com, go to War and Torah portions, and download the PDF and look it up. It's this Torah portion is different. This Torah portion, we actually are seeing not only the end of Deuteronomy, but our Haftorah portion is the very next chapter out of Joshua. And then, instead of being in the four Gospels, we are actually in our, for a Gospel portion, we are out of Acts, chapter 1, because we, we're looking at the ascension of Jesus Christ. So, let's dive right into Deuteronomy. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 34 or 33 and 34 sorry um 33 is moses he's about to go up to the mountain and the lord is going to take him and the lord is going to bury him so moses is giving his final blessings to the tribes of israel think about that Moses knows that he cannot enter into the promised land, but he has been leading the people all this time. Moses is even giving a final blessing to the people, knowing that he is about to be punished for his sin. How many of you know that there's a punishment for something you did wrong? Whether it be at work or personal life, your spouse, maybe you upset them, maybe you said something you shouldn't have said. You're avoiding the consequences instead of owning up to it, facing it, and saying, you know what, I'm going to continue on leading my family. If you are the husband and father, it is your role and responsibility to lead your family no matter what you did to upset them. It's your job to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Even if you are not 100% sure it was your fault, you need to make it right so that you can lead appropriately. So you can do the right thing and your family will follow. Moses did exactly this. He led the people of Israel right up until the end. He laid his hands on Joshua and he prayed over him. He gave the mantle of leadership over to Joshua. Our Haftar portion in the very next chapter, Joshua is standing before the, before the Lord, before the people of Israel, and the Lord speaks to Joshua. The mantle has been passed. What is the blessing? I said that the title this week is, This is the Blessing. The blessing cannot be turned over unless the old has died and the new has come to life until there is a passing. Now, let's, let's jump real quick over to Acts. Find my bookmark here. 
In Acts, we see the ascension of Jesus Christ. And what does Jesus talk about? The passing of the authority, the power, the miracles. He's already given the Great Commission. The Great Commission was done back in the Gospels. In Acts, he says, the Father alone has the authority to set uh, those dates. He's talking about the second coming. And he says, the Father alone has the, the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Before that, in verse 4, he says, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The blessing. What is the blessing? Well, for some of you, the blessing that you have yet to receive is the blessing of salvation. See, God the Father wants to have a relationship with you. He sent his son to die on the cross for your sins so that you can have a relationship with the creator of heaven and earth. If you need to renew and restore your relationship with God today, now is the time to do so and rebuild what has been broken. Renew your relationship with God. Ask Christ to re rebuild you, revitalize you, restore you, forgive you of your sins. Don't forget, Christ says, Yeshua Jesus said, Die daily. Take up your cross every day and follow me. Your body is filled with sin. Sinful needs, sinful desires. You need to die to yourself so that Christ, so that the Lord can be made more alive in you. The blessing is new life. In Acts, we see that the Holy Spirit is coming. Jesus says, just wait. I'm going to be leaving and the Holy Spirit will be coming. But he can't come until I'm gone. So I have to leave. Jesus was not sin. You have sin in your life that you need to get rid of in order to make way for God. I've been speaking on this, I think, for a few weeks now. You need to die to yourself. You need to take up your cross and follow Jesus. This is very important. Now, if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, this is what I would consider to be the second rebirth. One, are you saved? Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted him? And do you have a relationship with God the Father? If you don't, you need to. Call the ministry, talk to Robert Jessica, talk to somebody. Reach out on Signal, chat, whatever. You need to be saved. You need to understand and know that you can have a relationship with the Father. You need to build that relationship with Him. But then you need to speak in God's language. He is your Father, your Abba Daddy. Or at least he should be. He wants to be. Are you letting him? Think about this. If God is our Father in heaven, and there is none other like him, and he is the adult that we should be looking up to, that we should be striving to be more like, and he speaks in a heavenly language, and being filled with the Holy Spirit, you get your own heavenly language. You can speak to him in his language. 
When you pray to him in English, he knows you. He understands you. You're not talking baby talk. But you are talking a man-made infantile language compared to the language of the Lord. When you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior and you begin a relationship with the Father, you are born again. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it's like a fire gets lit inside of you. And it's a whole new birth again. Well, before Robert Jessica comes, thank you all for having me here. And don't forget that if you want to hear his voice clearly, you have to clearly understand his word. The Bible is his word. Read it. Understand it. And keep it close to your heart. Until next week, friends, when we dive into the book of Genesis. Shutop and Shalom. Now, please join us for a short time of Word and Prayer with Rabbi Jessica. Hello, friends. Jessica Stern Foster here. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are so excited. It is the Feast of Tabernacles, and we are in the time of Sukkot. So happy Sukkot. What is Sukkot? Sukkot is the Feast of Booths. What do you mean the Feast of Booths? It's tense. This is the festival where the Lord, he stated in Leviticus, where the Lord spoke to Moses and he spoke to him, speaking to the children of Israel, saying on the 15th day of the seven month, which um, we are to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles to remember when the children and Israel Rome, they lived in tents, in booths. And so we customarily remember the time that the children wandered in the wilderness. Now, this is a commandment of the Lord to observe his feast of tabernacles. The Lord commanded four times that this feast is to be observed in Exodus 23, 15 and 16, in Exodus 34, 22, in Leviticus 23, 33 through 36, and in Deuteronomy 16, 13 through 16. And it actually mentions six other times in the Bible including the New Testament. So in Numbers and Deuteronomy and Second Chronicles, um, Ezra, Zechariah, and in John 7, 2. And it makes total of 10 times, including the full gospel portion of our commandment to celebrate the Feast of Booths, the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, Zechariah tells us that the Feast of Tabernacles being the feast to observe by the nation in the millennium in Zechariah 14, 16 through 19. Isn't that exciting? This isn't something that's going to stop when Yeshua comes for us, his bride. He also explains that the plenty for those not observed, the penalty for those not observing the feast in that age. Now, there's sacrifices and offerings during this time, but we, even though in Numbers 29, it talks about those, we don't perform those sacrifices today. One, because there's no temple to perform them in, but two, because we are completed because Yeshua Jesus, he died on the cross for our sins and paid it once and for all. Did you know that most people consider that Jesus, that Yeshua, he was actually born during the feast of Sukkot? They actually, um, there's many people that do believe that. And there's a lot of evidence to support that he had his birthday. Um, now, we know that Jewish people have two birthdays. We celebrate our day of conception, 
which is our Hebrew birthday. And then our birthday on this earth, the day we were physically born. So it is not unreasonable to say that one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that December was chosen to celebrate uh, Yeshua Jesus's birthday is because that was his Jewish birthday, his date of conception, where his physical birthday was during the Feast of Tabernacles. So when people say, no, his birthday's here or there, maybe they're both right. Because we know as Jewish people, we have two birthdays because we like to celebrate that God can, he, the conception happened, life matters, life happened. And then the day that we took our first breath here on earth, how amazing is that? That God likes to celebrate us extra and that's okay. Now, when we build the sukkah, um, during the seven days of the festival, the Israelites were commanded to live in the booths, the Sukkot. And this is to commemorate how we lived in the desert after the Lord brought them out of the bondage of Egypt. And the booths are made out of olive branches and um, olive trees and oil trees and myrtle branches and palm branches and leafy trees. But here today, I know that some people will um, put up tents and they'll decorate them with fabric and lights. And sometimes it's just a tent. Sometimes you end up inside and you decorate a room by putting on the four walls fabric and adorning uh, with lights and candles to celebrate because it's really about the coming together of one another. Most believers would probably say that it is very well um, to do this and to have fun. But in Ephesians 2, 12 through 22, it points out that we are joined to the commonwealth of Israel. So i.e. from God's point of view, we are citizens of Israel, whether you are Jew or considered a Gentile or Christian. Um, if we have come to know Yeshua Jesus as our savior and we have a new heart for Yeshua Jesus, then not only is he our savior and not only are we joint heirs with Yeshua Jesus, our Messiah, but we are actually have citizenship. That's like having ownership papers that we can just take it to the bank, right? Because our Abba Daddy, he cares for us so much that he wanted to make sure that we were provided for in every way. So you, my friend, as a believer in Yeshua Messiah, have citizenship and ownership. How exciting is that? Well, you know, we know that as we remember to celebrate this time, we remember that fellowshipping with one another. We also have to remember that Satan's going to come and he's going to try to do some unscriptural things during the time. I know that as we start to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, we are starting to see Halloween things and the gory things. And, and um, not that we want to condemn the things of the world, but the Bible is pretty, pretty clear that we are supposed to set ourselves apart and not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. And so do I think that... Um, during this time of feast that we are set apart and different? Absolutely. But absolutely, it's just like Satan to try to set something up right after the holiest day of the year, which we celebrated last week with Yom Kippur. He wants to come and snatch that from God's people. Now, I'm not saying that we can't have fun and have great holiday, happy um, fall and feasts and harvests because we can absolutely do that. But we don't want to give in to the things of this world and uplifting things that don't honor God. But today I want to make sure that as the Lord led Israel through the wilderness and, he, and God made provisions for his children in the land. So he has provided for us also. If you look at this world, you might think that it's a dumpster on fire, rolling down a hill at warp speed. But guess what? Our Abadadi has promised us that we will not just 
thrive and survive during the time of famine, but that he is equipping us so that we can survive and thrive and be blessed beyond measure. Now, we still have to do our part because just like the children of Israel, they had to put on their sandals or walk barefoot. They had to walk out of Egypt and into the promised land. Yes, they took a slight detour that took them 40 years wandering around a mountain when it should have been at most a two-week trip with children in tow, animals, and toting all the way, trying to get all the stuff there. But we know that God's many blessings, that we will get all of the blessings he has for us. He has brought us out of the world and he has blessed us with his mercy and provision for his people. And we are his people. So let us rejoice in his feast with thanksgiving on our hearts and giving glory to Messiah always. I hope you have a fabulous and wonderful Sukkot. Pray with me before Pastor Jim comes to talk about the new heart that God is giving you during the Feast of Tabernacles. Heavenly Father, I just thank you and I praise you for my brother and sister who are watching today and the families. Lord, I thank you that you are equipping them and just filling them with everything they need. Any pain has to leave that you, Lord, are just providing for every single need. And that during this time of the feast, that we remember you knowing that you provide for us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving Pastor Jim the words of the Holy Spirit so that he can share with us your heart, oh God, as we come and celebrate this time of Sukkot. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, amen. Until next time, friends, remember God's phone number is Jeremiah 33.3. Call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things which you know not. Shatov and Shalom. Happy Sukkot. Now let's dig in a little deeper with a time of teaching with Messianic Pastor Jim. Hi, everybody. This is Pastor Jim. Uh, tonight we're going to kind of go back to last week and do a little review and then add to that. And then we're going to talk about tabernacles. Um, it's historical and uh, actually spiritual involvement in our lives. So anyway, it's back to guard your heart. Remember King David said, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. And when you're guarding your heart, you're being careful what you watch, what you hear, what you say, and of course, what you do. There's the eye gate. So you have to be careful of TV, Internet, movies, commercials. Because a lot of TV shows and even the commercials try to social engineer and bring things in that you don't like. And, I, and I've heard quite a few people in ministry say that, well, during the commercials, we just click the mute button. And that'll work. The ear gate. Anything you listen to, music, TV, internet, conversations with other people and your thought life because you are in your imagination. you hearing these things. So you have to lift up your shield of faith sometimes to quench those fiery conversations of the movie going on in your mind. And, you, you know, you don't have to listen to those movies going on inside of your head. Just lift up your shield, swing your sword, no weapon formed or whatever godly promise from the scriptures you want to repeat. Or you just say, Go away from me in the name of Jesus. I don't want to listen to this mess. Or get up out of the bed, because that's a lot of times when the enemy comes at you, when you're just laying there kind of semi-conscious. All right, the mouth gate. Be careful what you talk about, who you talk about. Uh, you're giving permission to the enemy to actually come into your life 
with your mouth and you don't even know it. You know, you've heard people say foot and mouth disease, but uh, you given access to the enemy and to your life, your family's life and all of that. And you, you never even realized it, but you don't want them coming into your life. All right. Doors and portals that allow the enemy into your life. Uh, there are many ways that the enemy sneaks in unaware into our lives. We don't realize it, but in most cases we don't. Bad things are bad experiences in, in your life. Uh, when your children, um, maybe even when you're in the womb and haven't even been born yet, because the soul comes into the womb as part of that light that enters. I've actually seen when the egg and the sperm come together, there is a spark or a flash of light when conception happens. And I'm not saying that's the soul, but the soul, Robert Jessica was talking about the conception birthday. Well, that's when you're on this earth when you're inside your mama's tummy because the Lord said he knew you even when you were formed in your mother's tummy. Okay. Uh, anyway, these things that happen to us during our lives, early lives, all through our lives, you know, you don't want reasons for unforgiveness and especially roots of bitterness that run deeper than unforgiveness. Okay, we're to keep the short accounts with the Lord. And that doesn't just mean asking for forgiveness. It means giving forgiveness. I want to repeat that. It means giving forgiveness. See, we talked about the heart being like a little child that watches everything and sees what's going on in the house and in your life and, and in the neighborhood. And that little child remembers stuff. And that heart of yours has that brain we talked about. And it remembers stuff. And so in keeping short accounts, you need to forgive those offenses. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is something you do. And we're commanded to do it. We don't be turned over to the tormentors. We want to cleanse our heart daily. Remember the parable of the servant that uh, owed his master, I'm saying a million bucks. And he begs him, oh, be patient with me. I'll repay you. And his master forgives him. And as soon as he's going out, he grabs a fellow servant and say, give me that 20 bucks you owe me. Big difference, million, 20. And he throws him into the hoose cow and the master finds out from other servants and he has that wicked servant, as they called him, thrown into the hoose cow and turned over to the tormentors until he paid the full debt. And what did Yeshua Jesus say? He said, and so much more. Will my father do to you if you do not forgive? So I'm going to turn you over to the tormentors for not forgiving. Uh, we don't have the right to not forgive. I didn't say you don't get justice, but forgiveness doesn't equal trust, as Robert Jessica says, and forgiveness doesn't equal forgetting about it totally. It's releasing them, not holding them liable for it so that it doesn't back up in your heart and do things it shouldn't. Okay, um, one of those doors and portals, back pain can be a torment to a person's body. Shoulder pain, whatever the pains are in your body, those things torment you and keep you from sleeping. And you want to make sure that you don't have unforgiveness and roots of bitterness. Those fiery darts of the enemy, again, you raise your shield to quench those fiery darts and put them out. Uh, the heart has that brain that remembers things. So now let's look at another portal, which are ancestry and generational problems. 
a lot of times we call them generational curses, but the bloodline of the children from the parents and the grandparents and all the way back to Noah, you know, there's, there's a bloodline. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and everybody's descended from those bloodlines. So, uh, what we want to do is if we think we're under a generational curse or a bloodline problem because Uncle Billy had this problem, Grandma had it, Daddy had it, now you have it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good reasoning. Now, why is it generational? Um, don't know. But there are people that join secret societies, and we need to renounce those secret societies or those groups and those worshiping of other things other than the real God. We need to renounce, and we also need to forgive our relatives for getting messed up into that and bringing this stuff on them. Remember... Um, when Pilate said, I'm washing my hands of this, this man's innocent. You sure and hadn't done anything worth killing him? And they said, crucify him. Let his blood be on us and our children. Well, there it was out of their mouth. Us and our children. That's not good. You have to renounce those things that ancestors have said in jest or just joining the club or fraternity or whatever. So we have to renounce them, ask God to forgive us, and ask ourselves, just state it, Heavenly Father, I forgive my ancestors, my grandpa or whatever, my ancestors for getting us involved in this trouble okay so remember my people perish for lack of knowledge so let's talk about this on the next slide so your ancestors built bent the knee to the occult or did something to allow demic, demonic attacks to follow on their children the children's children down to the great grandchildren and you know or should know that God made a way to deal and get you out of this, okay? It's the blood of Yeshua, Jesus. He had Jesus take the fall for us. So we can get out from under this stuff, but sometimes we need to ask the Holy Spirit to show us where the unforgiveness is in our hearts. And the Holy Spirit will do it. Yes, he will. And... uh you ask forgiveness, and you forgive, okay? There's people that you need to forgive, just, and you didn't even think about it. It's all the way back to when you were in, you know, grade school. Who knows? But uh, you don't want to hold those offenses, okay? Forgive your ancestors. I say that again just to remind you. Now, there are other doors and portals we open and give access to the enemy. So if you're spirit-filled and have the prayer language, uh, you can ask the Holy Spirit of God to bring to your memory these things. And I did this uh, about a week ago just because I knew something was coming at me and it's like rebuking it's not helping. Do I have some unforgiveness somewhere in my heart? And the Holy Spirit came up with things. And I, I just forgave him, forgave him, forgave him all the way through. And any root of bitterness, you need to cast it out. You don't want that in your life. Okay? So be prepared. The Holy Spirit's going to bring things up in your past memory. And just forgive, get rid of it, cleanse it out. And say so you forgive them in each situation. And ask God to heal your heart. After you exhausted all the, you know, possibilities of unforgiveness, ask God to heal your heart, the blood of Jesus, and cleanse it. 
from any damage because there's little cracks that we don't even know about. So fill it with the blood of Jesus and heal it up. Uh, and again, keep those short accounts, not only asking forgiveness, but giving forgiveness. Okay. And remember to raise that shield of faith when those fiery thoughts and imaginations come into your mind, just like, well, you know, if this had happened a different way, this would have happened. And that's just daydreaming and cut that stuff off because the enemy is trying to occupy your mind. All right, Feast of Tabernacles. It began Sunday at sundown, and it'll last till this Sunday at sundown. The festival is a reminder that Israel was in the wilderness 40 years living in tents and portable booths in the wilderness outside the promised land of God. And they were just slowly going around a mountain. So what happened? They were totally dependent on God for food, water, and comfort in the desert. And you know, in the desert, that sun can really beat down on you. It's like out being out on the beach without an umbrella. And God provided all of that, including the spiritual umbrella that kept them cool and comfortable. Okay? Let's talk about the food. Manna. What is it? That's what manna means. What is it? And that was the wafer that they would collect first thing in the morning. While the dew was on the ground, they were collecting these wafers. And you got a certain allotment each day for each person in your household. And if you tried to store it up and keep extra, it got wormy and just not worth it. So you toss it out, clean your container again, except for the preparation day. The preparation day was the day before the Sabbath, and you were able to get a double portion. Okay. A rock followed them around. Remember, this is why Moses didn't get to go into the promised land. He got angry one day and struck the rock. And all he had to do was speak to the rock, the rock that followed him around and gave him the water. Who does that sound like? Does that sound like Yeshua, the Messiah? Yeah, it was. Yes, please. Because God the Father, yeah, hey, thank you for Chiming in on that. Yes, it was. It was Yeshua. Jesus was the rock that followed them around. There's two million people get water from that rock and their flocks. So that's a lot of water coming out. A shadow kept them from frying in the sunshine. That shadow just followed them around the mountain and stayed over top of them during the day. Then at night, see if I put that in there. At night, there was a fire right over top of the tabernacle. Tabernacle? Yes, Moses was given specific instructions how to build the tabernacle, how to build the Ark of the Covenant, which was inside the tabernacle in the holiest of holy portion behind the curtain and the flame, the fire and flame which is over God's tabernacle. That was his presence right there with the children of Israel during those 40 years. So God totally provided for them and protection, supernatural protection, just like uh, he did for Job. Remember, Satan said, well, if you take away Job's protection, he'll curse you to your face. And God allowed that to happen. Job didn't. So the children of Israel for those 40 years were under God's protection there. And he, they were under his protection when they went into the promised land. But I'm um, going down a rabbit hole, and I don't mean to go there right now. So the fire at night was there every night. Lit the whole place up. All the tents were assigned places around the tabernacle. So, yes. The children were in tents for 40 years, and that's what the Feast of Tabernacles celebrates. But they were under God's protection. And the rabbis say that that 
tabernacle, that housed presence of God that had the flame above it, kind of breathed. It's like to breathe in, walls in, walls fall a little bit. It's just like God was breathing inside that tent. And that is cool. That is his presence in his tabernacle. So we're to remember that God's presence was with them in the wilderness. We have his presence abiding with us. If we ask Yeshua Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, we got the Holy Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit of God dwelling in your tabernacle. Remember when we pray that aggressive prayer that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I exercise authority over this, my body, sickness and disease. I refuse to allow you to stay. This body, this house belongs to God. It is a temple of God. Satan, you have no right to trespass on God's property. Then you get out. You leave my body. I've got authority over you. I know it. You know it. And God knows it. So get. And that is Kenneth E. Hagen's aggressive faith prayer. Okay, Pop Hagen. So we've received the fullness and we have that Holy Ghost language of being able to speak in tongues and pray in God's language to Abba Daddy. So we have that tabernacle. We are kind of a tabernacle because we have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling inside of us. Okay. You say you never ask for the fullness with your prayer language? Well, all you got to do is ask. Just ask and the Father will give it to you. That's Luke eleven thirteen. 13. Uh, it was, you sure Jesus was talking about uh, God giving the Holy Spirit to you and he and, and we as people know how to give good gifts. And if our children ask for bread, we're not going to give them a rock. Uh, basically, Yeshua was doing a parable. And he says, and even so, the Father will gladly give you the Holy Spirit. So that's Luke eleven thirteen. But backing up to Acts 19, 1 through 6, Paul goes and he finds... I think it was around 20 people, men, that had been baptized by John the Baptist. In other words, they got their salvation before Yeshua was known. And then they went back to where they were in one of those areas, not in Jerusalem, away from John in the Jordan River area. But they had been many years and Paul says have you received the Holy Spirit and they said we don't even know what a Holy Spirit is say what and he says well, what baptism John the Baptist baptized us well Yeshua's come since then he was telling you to get ready for Yeshua and the Messiah's come and he was Yeshua and Joseph, the suffering servant, not Yeshua ben David, the returning king that will come back the second time. But long and short of it, they got born again. They got filled with the Spirit, and they spoke in tongues just like everybody else did on the day of Pentecost and the others that had gotten born again. Because when Peter told the other disciples, you know, I went to this centurion's house and they all got filled with the spirit and spoke in tongues just like we did on the day of Pentecost. Uh, well, that's kind of a pattern and you see that the language happens. And so you will be able to ask your father for it. And John the Baptist said, Messiah comes and baptizes with the Holy Spirit and the fire. So. As Pastor John said earlier, he told them, don't leave Jerusalem 
till you get the promise of the Father. Well, the promise of the Father is that comforter, that Holy Spirit inside of us to tabernacle with us. And that's that's the bright light of the Feast of Tabernacles for you tonight, that you've accepted Yeshua as your Messiah. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And you have the Holy Spirit and you have your prayer language, and you are tabernacling 24-7 with the Holy Spirit of God in you. And that is the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay. We need to look forward, and in Revelations chapter 21, it talks about it. We will dwell with Father God, and our big brother Jesus in the New Jerusalem. Okay? There won't be a temple because they don't need a temple to be worshipped. They're going to be right there. You're going to see them. You're going to talk with them. You're going to live with them, which is too cool. All right. I'm going to stop the share. And... We have a couple other things to talk about, and then uh, I'll say the closing prayer. There will be a short after call tonight. There'll be some scrolling messages after I close out in prayer. But uh, if you need to talk to Jesus and God about getting the Holy Spirit's fullness in your prayer language, they'll give it to you. But the Holy Spirit ain't going to jump out of you like somebody at Walmart grabbing a microphone and saying, come on, shoppers, it's a blue light. That, uh, the Holy Spirit is not going to force itself out of you. You have to allow it to flow. You know, you get some strange words in your mind, just say them. Just allow access. And remember, it's not you, it's the Holy Spirit in this prayer language. And I'm sure if you contact Worship at the Rock, somebody will help coach you through this, whether it be Melissa or John or Robbie Jessica or myself or others that have that prayer language. It is just a wonderful thing to be able to talk to Dad anytime you want because you have his spirit tabernacling with you 24-7, all the time, and you better get a relationship with that Holy Spirit that's in you, because uh, that's the smartest fellow you're ever going to know. Okay, let's have our closing prayer. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord protect you and keep you under his wing of protection. The Lord guide you through his Holy Spirit. The Lord's kindness and love track you down. You, your family, and all that is yours should be blessed in the name, the mighty name of Yeshua Jesus, the Messiah. And with that, we say, Amen. Good night. Shalom. joining us for another amazing night of worship and diving into the Word of God. Please join us next week where Pastor John will be giving us the Torah portion, Rabbi Jessica will be giving us the Word portion, and Messianic Pastor Jim will be giving us the teaching. Thank you so much to all of our friends and partners for your prayers and financial support. The best way you can give is to go to graceandtruthmagazine.com, select donations, then online giving. Your prayers and financial support are what empower us to keep building the kingdom. What we sow today comes back in our tomorrow as an amazing harvest.
Until next week, Shabbat and Shalom.